What is up everyone and welcome to a new tutorial about the Oculus Interaction SDK. Now in today's video we are going to take a look at a core part of any game, user interface. We learn how to set up curved UI and be able to interact with them with the poke and the ray interaction we made in the two previous episodes. But without further ado, let's get started with our tutorial. Ok, so to add a user interface to our scene, we can right click in the hierarchy, go to UI, Canvas, and now by doing so, we are adding two objects in our scene. A canvas, which is the space where we will be able to add the user interface element, like a text or a button, and an event system, which makes possible to trigger some event with it. So if I double click on the canvas, we can see that it is a big rectangle in our scene, and so to make this canvas part of our world, we need to go to the render mode here and change it to world space. Then we can change the scale to 0.001 on all axes. There you go, now our canvas is in the middle of nowhere, so let's reset its position to 0, 0, 0, and double click on it to zoom on it. There you go, now we can see it in our scene. What's the first to do is to move it to the position we want, so behind the table for example. You can then press on T and now you will be able to edit the border size. So little tips just for you. You can also press on the Alt key while resizing to keep the center. Okay, here you go. Now let's add some element to it. First, I'm going to right click on it and go to UI, Panel. We can change the color to black. And as you can see, this will be the background of our UI. Now, obviously the UI that you will use here depends on what kind of game you want to make, but in our case, we are just testing the interaction so let's simply add a button then a slider and finally a drop down there you go so now let's do something that I'm really excited about and it's to make this canvas curved. So this is something that is not built by default in Unity and that is now available with the Oculus Interaction SDK. So to set it up, it's very simple. We can go to our canvas and add a canvas render texture. Now, as the name suggests, this component takes the canvas into a render texture. We can get rid of the warning here by clicking on fix. Perfect. And so this will remove the UI layer in the camera cooling mode as you can see here so this means that now everything on that layer is not seen by the camera anymore and as you can see we have different rendering mode uh, if we go back to our canvas but we will have a look at it later next now that our canvas can be a render texture with this component we can use it on a mesh to curve it so let's create a cylinder to shape our canvas I'm going to create an empty game object as a child of the canvas rename it cylinder. So we will need three components on this uh, game object. First, a canvas cylinder. We can drag in the canvas renderer texture parameter, the canvas renderer texture component we just added earlier. So the second component is a cylinder. And finally, a pointable cylinder. We can drag the cylinder in the canvas cylinder. But as you can see, we have now an error. The cylinder needs to be a parent of this game object. So to fix this, we can remove this component, add a new empty game object. We can call it canvas cylinder and then add back the canvas cylinder component. Now, don't forget to assign back the canvas render texture. And now we can drag the cylinder in both the canvas cylinder cylinder and in the pointable cylinder as well. So we cannot see the cylinder right now because our canvas has a really small scale. So let's increase its scale a little bit. We can also adjust the radius and the height of our cylinder with these two components as well as the position. Perfect, I think it looks good right now. So let's click on play to see if our canvas is curved. And there you go. As you can see, it is working. We have a copy of the canvas curved. So the position is a bit weird and I don't know why here. So before leaving play mode, we can actually reposition the cylinder, then copy the transform component. We can now leave play mode and pass it back. Now, by the way, what's behind it is not seen by the camera anymore as it is on the UI layer. So don't worry about it. But as you can see, our button is curved, but not the panel behind it. And this is an issue caused by the render mode that I was talking earlier, which is not taking into account transparent object. So to fix this, let's leave play mode, go to our canvas render texture and change it to alpha blended. 
Now, as you can see, if I click on play, it worked. We have the transparency showing right now. And if you feel like the canvas is a bit blurry like this, you can actually increase the details here with the render scale. And so another issue is that even if we can see the canvas here in the inspector, when putting on the headset, we cannot see it. And so this is a simple fix. We can go to our cylinder and change the layer of him and his children to default. There you go. And now if we click back on play, everything works and it's looking really good. I can see the curved canvas. Good job. Okay, so we made a curved canvas. Now let's see how we can interact with it with a ray. As we already know, the first thing we need to interact with a ray is a ray interactable component. So let's select our canvas and add it. Now here we need a collider in this component. To do so, let's go in the canvas cylinder game object and simply create a mesh collider. We can now drag it in the ray interactable we have and then we can also drag it in the canvas cylinder component. Actually the mesh collider here will take the shape of our curve UI by doing this. Okay, so back to our ray interactable, we can add, if we want, the cylinder surface that we made, but it's actually optional, it's mainly used when dragging the ray outside of the canvas to have it still follow the cylinder shape. Okay, then we can add a pointable canvas. For the first parameter, we can drag the ray interactable, and for the second one, drag our canvas. And now, right now, our canvas is ready to be interacted, but as we have not a normal canvas, but a curved canvas, things are a bit different. Mostly because the curved canvas adds a copy of the main canvas and needs to pass the event. So to do this, we need to add, exceptionally in our case, a canvas mesh pointable. Then drag the canvas render texture in the first parameter and the ray interactable in the second one. And now really important, it's not the ray interactable that we want anymore in the canvas pointable, it's the canvas mesh pointable. So let's drag it instead. Okay, so our canvas is now ready for the interactable. Now the last thing to do is make our ray trigger user interface event, but this is actually really easy. We can go to the event system that was created earlier, remove the standard input module, and instead use the pointable canvas module. Okay, so I think everything is ready. Now let's try our game. Okay guys, so I just found a weird bug with the ray interaction. So as you can see, it is not working now. And so I think it would be good if I show you a little fix for the one who gets stuck with this issue. And it's basically because here on canvas has a scale of 0 0.001, which for some reason makes the ray not interact with it. So just a simple solution is actually to increase the size of the canvas and just reduce the border by pressing on T and now if we scale down do the same on the button the slider and the drop down now let's try it by clicking on play okay awesome guys it worked this is so cool we can interact with our UI using the ray on both the controller and using and tracking it's just awesome and now at this point you can use the own user interface even to trigger anything you want and you can also use the pointable canvas unity event here uh, to create new event when interacting with the ray. So remember, if at this stage the canvas ray interactable does not work, just change here the scale of the canvas to a bigger value and you should be good. So right now we can interact with this UI using the ray, which is really good when it's a far away canvas. But let's see how we can interact with it when it's near using the poke interaction. So I'm going to recreate a new canvas exactly like we did earlier. As this canvas is now really close to us, there is no point to have it curved. Now to poke this user interface, I'm going to add a pointable canvas. We can drag our canvas inside. And now it's exactly the same as we did for this button. We can add a poke interactable, drag it in the pointable canvas parameter. So to set up the poke interactable, we want a proximity field to detect when touching. So let's add a new empty game object as a child of the canvas with a new box proximity field component, drag there our game object and scale it up to the size of the canvas. Then the next thing is to reference this proximity field in the poke interactable. Now we are still missing a surface so I'm simply going to add a pointable plane in the canvas and there it is as you can see we can see the surface right there. Now we can drag it in our poke interactable. Oh by the way, don't forget to set the layer of this near canvas to default. 
so that we will be able to see it. And finally, let's click on play to try this. And there you go, guys. It works. We can interact with our poke with the near user interface. It's awesome. I know this was an intense video with three new things that we learned. Curve canvas, ray on UI, poke on UI, and I hope that you enjoy following along. Now, don't forget to leave a like under this video to help this channel. You can have access to the source code as well as some exclusive content on my Patreon. So what are you waiting for? Now, thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.